Well, uh, Dr. Jakob has presented the details of the TTFS scheme. It's something which we thought would be timely to review, and I announced our intention to do so in the National Day Rally when I spoke in Malay. I'm happy that we've got an improved scheme. I think it will be able to cover the people who need help more accurately and more generously, and at the same time, those families who are able to support their own children in tertiary education uh, will be able to do it on them, by themselves so that the resources can be freed up for the more needy members of the community through Mendaki's uh, projects. So I think it's a good outcome. I hope the community will take it in the right spirit. Those who can should go on their own efforts. Those who need more help, the, more, the greater help will be available. Well, obviously, I think he's a good man for the job. Uh, he's got the skills, he's got the temperament. I think he's got the experience which should be useful for the job. It's a challenging job to be speaker because you have to maintain decorum, you have to maintain the tone of the debate. At the same time, you have to have enough room and flexibility to encourage a full and vigorous discussion in the House. The purpose is not to keep everything locked down, but to have as full an airing as possible, being fair to both sides, but keeping decorum and order, because this is a serious place where you're discussing serious matters. And I think uh, watching Michael Palmer over the last few years, he has a combination of experience and uh, temperament to do the job. He's a rugby player. Maybe uh, that gives him a certain uh, robust, of, robust approach. But at the same time, he's got a touch to get along with people and to um, m make clear what is necessary without um, having to raise his voice. And I think to be a speaker, that's important. Yeah, um, Parliament starts session next month. You expect a more robust debate in Parliament given uh, more opposition members in the Well, I, I expect so. There will be nine members now, more elected and a few more because of the NCMP scheme. The purpose was to have a more robust discussion and also to have more different views expressed in the House so that all perspectives can be canvassed and uh, Singaporeans can, will feel that if they have a, a perspective which is different from the government's, well, it has been aired and considered. It has not just been glossed over or, 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 or uh, uh, shut up. And I think uh, that's the purpose of a parliamentary debate. But how it develops, we'll have to see because... It depends on the dynamics of the debate, it depends on the contributions of the members, it depends whether they, they take a serious approach to discuss the issues, or whether they take a tactical approach and just use it to score political points. So I hope that we will be able to move forward in a constructive direction. What kind of advice have you been given, uh, given to KP and PS on how to prepare themselves for the next financial year? Uh, first of all, believe in what you say and master the subject so that you can say something which you know about. Secondly, speak up for your constituents, speak up for what Singaporeans feel, speak up for what is on people's minds and what people are worried about, and help us, to help, us help Singaporeans to understand where we are, what we need to do together, and help to form the debate, not just reflecting views, which is important, but also helping to form and shape views so that we can develop a consensus and we can move forward together. I think it depends on the issues. I mean, if there are issues of conscience, we will, we will lift the whip. If these are matters of policy, well, then you have to go along the government. We have to go along party discipline. So at the, after the recent presidential election, uh, some people have called the process uh, an over-politicized one. And the whole one thing and Mr. Janana's statement have asked for uh, for changes to be made so that the president is no longer directly elected. Do you agree that the process is over politicized and, and, and do you agree with uh, with them that a move should be made in the in, the, in that direction? Well, I expressed my views uh, the night of the presidential election when I made a comment on the outcome, and all, then also when we had the swearing-in ceremony last week when I commented on how the campaign had become politicized and on issues which are really not within the responsibility of the president. And 
also talked about how the institution is still evolving, and those remain my views. I think it's good that there is a public debate on the experience of the presidential election. Jana Das and uh, Ho Kwong Ping wrote a piece last week. I see today Cheng Chun Tat wrote a piece arguing the opposite point of view. And there have also been um, other pieces in the newspapers, Dao Pao, Straits Times Foreign Page, even the Brita Harian, and different perspectives raised and concerns too, particularly amongst the minority communities, that uh, if the process carries on like this, well, it will become difficult to elect a minority president because uh, that's the nature of, uh, of, of um, election politics. Uh, we are following the debate carefully. I think it's still very early yet and we have not come to any conclusions. You, you were part of the select committee hearings. So do, do you think the arguments for a directly elected president who has a mandate from the people so he can stand up to the Prime Minister if he disagrees? Is, well, do, do those arguments still Well, I think they, those were strong arguments. Otherwise, we would not have gone in this direction. But how it works out, what the, what the um, dynamics is, uh, that's something which we have to see and we watch with experience. And you have seen how over the years we have um, refined the provisions and the rules so as to make the system work. So as I said, it's just two weeks after the elections, I, we have no conclusions yet.